Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. Once again, by popular demand, we have back our good friends from Montclair Film, Evelyn McGee Colbert, president of Montclair Film, and Bob Feinberg, founder and chairman of Montclair Film. Great to have both of you. Thank you and for having Evie, us. Evie, is it my mistake that one of us looks especially tan and relaxed? <laughs> well, certainly not me, not either tan or relaxed. <laughs> and listen, I'm Italian and I get tan, but it's, we're doing this right of the holidays. Bob Feinberg's on vacation, but he's so committed to Montclair film and doing this that he took his time to be with us. Welcome. All right, enough of Thank that. Thank you. Um, Evie, talk to us. As we do this program at the end of 2021, seen in 2022, how excited are you? And I'll ask Bob the same question about the future of Montclair film. We'll talk about some of the challenges you've had as well. Very excited. Um, we had a wonderful festival in October. We're back in, we're back in person. We had um, COVID requirements, but people came back. They felt safe. It was incredibly moving to be back sharing the experience of watching film together in person with people. Um, today, we've had some exciting news in that the Golden Globe nominees were announced, and many of the films are films that we showed during our festival, so we're feeling very happy about that. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, it's exciting. And, and during the festival, we reopened the Claridge Theater, which was an uh, independent movie theater basically across the street from our headquarters on Bloomfield Avenue in Montclair. We renovated it and opened it, and we now run it 365 days a year as an independent movie theater. So that's super exciting. A lot going on. Yeah. Yeah, and Bob, my wife and I were at that opening of the, which is around the corner from our home. It's a, it's a, an iconic, important theater, uh, the Clare Ridge, and to see Montclair film <clears throat> take it over and do what you're doing is extraordinary. Bob, tell folks not just about the great things going on, but some of the challenges Montclair films, uh, film, Montclair film, has faced, have faced, and particularly around, I mean, the the hurricanes were terrible. Yeah, the, the hurricane uh, Ida was was terrible. And Evie mentioned our headquarters at, at 505 Bloomfield Avenue, the Investors Bank Film and Media Center. Uh, this is an old bank building that we rehabilitated about five years ago and created uh, educational space and uh, exhibition space and offices. Uh, and during the most recent hurricane, we had about five feet of water uh, in our education concourse. So. Um, on top of the pandemic, um, we uh, set about um, uh, rebuilding that space, and that's an ongoing project. Um, we've done the demo. We're, we're reimagining uh, how we're going to utilize uh, that space. We had, luckily, we had uh, insurance. Um, less luckily, the insurance is not going to cover all of our expenses, and we've seen a, a great outpouring of support from the community to help us get that space uh, up and running. Um, you know, we've launched, as Evie mentioned, the, the Claridge Theater, which is an, uh, an iconic art house movie theater in Montclair, been there for decades, shut at the beginning of the pandemic. And we uh, took it over and spent a number of months renovating the space. If you haven't been there in a long time, you should come see it. It looks beautiful. Um, and we've invested a lot of time and energy making sure that it's COVID safe. Of course, it's a, you know, it's a challenge of uh, uh, bringing people back to the movie theater. We think we think they're going to come back. We're seeing them coming back, but uh, we're in it for the long haul. Last, you know, this is our this is our 10th anniversary. This festival that we just had celebrated the 10th anniversary of, of Montclair Film. So we're really launching our second 10 years, um, and we have a number of projects going on to to help uh, help help that launch. Have you talked to us about this membership? Um, beyond the films, beyond the film festival, the educational programs are terrific. And that's just a piece of what's going on. Uh, tell people why membership to Montclair Film is so valuable as we put up the information. Sure, sure. Well, one of the things that's really interesting is your, the Montclair Film membership has become more valuable with the Claridge. Uh, our members receive discounted price, uh, ticket prices, and we even have, I think, a promotion going where you get one or two films free when you become a member. So um, it's a great time to become a member of Montclair Film. Uh, but it, in addition to being a member of uh, the Claridge and being able to see movies, it supports, as you mentioned, our education programs. So we are really bullish and hopeful to expand what we do in the education field 
now that we have the Claridge, we can we have a little bit more space once we renovate, once we get back into our headquarters, we'll be able to do a little bit more with education. And we also hope to move our education program into schools themselves. We have a program running right now in Newark in a school. We hope to duplicate that, do more of that. So membership is a great way to support all of our efforts. It's a we're a real community organization. So being a part of something exciting in Montclair. And regardless of whether you live in Montclair in northern New Jersey, New York, it's a great reason to to join. Yeah, it was packed in October. There, you could tell there wasn't just there weren't just folks from Montclair. They were from all over. Bob, let me ask you: as you and Evie and the team and Tom Hall and the great staff at Montclair Film keep things running, you're not exactly sure what the situation is going to be in the spring. This again, be seen. This program be seen in the beginning of 2022. How do you prepare for a festival that's largely? indoor, outdoor, lots of different things, but we don't know about where we'll be with the pandemic. How do you strategically plan? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Don't say carefully. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we did that uh, uh, when the pandemic hit, right? In, uh, uh, in 2020, um, we were scheduled to have our festival, what was going to be the ninth festival in May of that year. And it had been in May uh, every year. And the pandemic hit in March and we postponed and we ultimately uh, did a uh, largely a virtual festival in October of 2020. And, you know, we did some live stuff. This is New Jersey, of course. So we had some drive in uh, drive in movies uh, uh, that Essex County gave us space for near the Turtleback Zoo. Um, but it was mainly virtual. Um, and we decided, among other things, that we we're going to keep the festival in October. So, um, you know, we have a little more breathing room in that the 11th festival uh, will be in the second part of October of 2022. Um, but we're going to do what everybody else is doing, Steve. We're going to watch wh what's happening. We're going to follow the science. Uh, we're going to focus on the safety of our audiences and our exhibitors. Um, and uh, as Evie mentioned, you know, we've got an incredible staff that has really pivoted uh, a number of times from live to virtual, from our building at 505 to other locations after the, uh, after the hurricane. Uh, and, you know, we, we think we're going to, this is the new normal, right? We're going to have to continue um, responding. Uh, the good thing is, you know, you know there's a tremendous uh, uh, interest in what we do. And we've seen that uh, continue through all of these challenges. And we want to be there uh, for our audiences and, and we're going to be there. And uh, bottom line from our perspective is not, is it not only, um, it's not only Montclair Film, it's public broadcasting, Bob knows well as the uh, chief legal counsel at WNET and with our partners or the folks at uh, NJPBS. Um, and Evie understands this also in your home. I'm sure your, your husband, uh, Stephen, they are adapting and evolving have them from day one. And we've seen the show as fans of it. So final words, uh, Evier, adapting and evolving, not an option. It's just part of being in the arts. Yeah, I, well, I think that's true. I mean, flexibility is the name of the game. And, and I think uh, while we're bullish about the future, we're also fiscally very conservative. So we budget three different ways, you know, scenario one, scenario two, scenario three, and then we see which one we get. And, uh, you know, we take it as it comes, but... I think I think cautiously optimistic is the way we might proceed. <laughs> right. Evie, Bob, uh, absolutely. Evie and Bob, thank you so much. We, we, we wish you and the team at Montclair Film all the best. And we're going to do everything we can on our end to make sure we let people know about the important things going on and how they can access it. All the best, Bob and Evie. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Steve. Steve. Thank you. That's Evie. That's Bob. I'm Steve. We'll be right back. Think Tank with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Investors Bank, Hackensack Meridian Health, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the Northward Center, the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities Clean Energy Program, the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, Choose New Jersey, Fedway Associates Inc., and by Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters, Promotional support provided by NorthJersey.com and Local IQ, part of the USA Today Network, and by AM970 The Answer. The essence of the Northward Center is ingrained in our values, thoughts, and actions. 
What began as a storefront on Bloomfield Avenue has evolved into a life-changing community nonprofit. The mansion is steeped in tradition, but with all of its grandeur, the true essence of the North Ward Center is in the people we serve. So as the North Ward Center commemorates 50 years of service, let's also celebrate the many opportunities yet to come.